Hello, Sarah Yost, Minivan Confessions. Um, coming to you to talk to you about the idea of the concept of letting go. Um, we, uh, you know, it's a really smart thing and you hear a lot of spiritual teachers in a lot of places talk about letting go or letting go and letting God or surrender, surrender to win, things like that. And that definitely has its place, but it's so misused. It's so misused. Um, a lot of women decide that let it go means that they don't do anything <clears throat> about the situation that they're in. They don't ask for a changed behavior. They don't, um, they don't demand anything else for themselves. Um, and they just let it go. That's what nice girls do, right? That's what peaceful women do. Um, no, not necessarily. The thing that you need to let go of is the story that you're telling yourself, the emotions that you're experiencing that aren't effective. So let's say that your partner is, I don't know, for example, not helping you with household chores and you're pissed and you feel like it's not fair and you don't want to take care of them and you don't want to be the only one doing it. And you know, what kind of a woman is in this you know, like barefoot in housekeeping mode. That's not what you plan to do. And you got with this guy and he expects you to do the dishes or do all the laundry or do more housework. I mean, more childcare than you want to do, whatever it is. I mean, lots of, I mean, even good guys, like plenty of good guys do that stuff. So, so many of these roles are so entrenched. It's, you know, it's, it's so entrenched. So let's say that's your situation. Well, um, you don't want to let it go because you don't want to do all that stuff. You, do not think it's fair. This is not the partnership that you want to have. Well, that's fine, but you need to let go of the idea that it's not fair, that he should be different, that there's something wrong with him. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with your marriage. Like, let go of all of that. None of that is helpful. None of that is helpful. And when you can get rid of the animosity or the fuck you -edness of the situation, then you come back to a place where you have real power. And you figure out what you can do about it. Figure out what you can ask for. How to ask for it in a way that he might respond and not just feel defensive about. Um, how to negotiate it. Maybe if he really refuses to respond, you get to decide that you're going to handle it, but you're going to hire people. Um, you decide to be the household manager, um, even though it means that you're not doing everything. And the good news about that is that means you can do it all your way if he's not going to participate. So there's lots of solutions to that. But the first thing to do is to let go of the animosity, let go of the fuck you -edness. let go of the sense that it's not fair because all of that just it just halts everything it's just it's just an unnecessary fight and it stands in the way of you actually getting what it is that you want what it is that you believe you deserve what you want to create in your life in your relationship so if you want to um, interact with another person and you can't ever make anybody do anything for sure um, but you can influence them and you can set the stage for them to be willing to work with you. And the best way to do that is to let go of the animosity. Let go of the animosity and get clear on what you do want and what your deal breakers are and what you're going to do about it if, if that doesn't happen. You get clear on that and then you share it with them. Works so much better.